Welcome to Contacts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the consolidated financial statements. We're going to be looking at the longer question and we are going to be completing the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. So as you can see down here, we are asked to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss for Villa Cargo for the year ended 28 February 2021 and to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for Villa Cargo as of 28 February 2021 as well. So these are the two statements we are going to focus on and that's what we are going to complete. So here we are given the financial statements for the two entities for Villa Cargo and for Shiligo. So let's read what they tell us here. They say on the 1st of June 2020, Villa Cargo acquired 80% of the share capital of Shiligo. So what do we notice here? Well, Villa Cargo is going to be the parent company because it's the one which is acquiring the subsidiary, which is Shiligo. Okay, so it's acquired 80%. That means that obviously the parent company will have control of the subsidiary. And then we are also told that Shiligo has been greatly affected by COVID-19 and has been making significant losses as a result. In light of Shiligo's difficulties, Villa Cargo made an immediate cash payment of only 12 rand 50 cents per share. Furthermore, Villa Cargo will pay an amount in cash on 28 February 2022 if Shiligo returns to profitability by that date. This contingent consideration at the date of acquisition was estimated to be at the value of 26 million rand. But at 28 February 2021, due to continuing losses, its value was estimated at only 22 million rand. The contingent consideration has not been recorded by Villa Cargo, which is the parent company. The directors of Villa Cargo, the parent company, expect the acquisition to be a bargain purchase leading to a negative goodwill. So what do we see here? We may have to be dealing with negative goodwill. But the only way we'll know that is if we can do the calculation for the goodwill and see if it is really negative. At the date of acquisition, shares in Shiligo had a market price of 7 rand per share. Below are the abridged draft financial statements of both companies. So like I said, we are given the statement of profit or loss for the year. And we have Villa Cargo on the left, which is the parent company, and Shiligo on the right for both statements. As you can see down here, we have the statement of financial position. We also have additional information at the bottom here. So we are told that the following information is relevant. So let's start by doing these financial statements and looking at each of the information that we are given and see how we do the calculations and come about in completing the consolidated statement of profit or loss and the consolidated statement of financial position. Now, what I have done already here is just take those two financial statements and put them in Excel. So we'll be doing a solution in Excel, actually. So what I've done is that I've just taken the financial statements for the two companies, for the parent and the subsidiary, and just put them here. And you'll see why I did that just now. It will help us move a bit quicker and it will also make our work easier as we do our calculations. So as you can see, I've just copied these financial statements from the question paper and put it in Excel. And then we can begin doing our consolidation. Now, one thing that we have to pay attention to is the dates, okay? So we can see here that the financial year end is 28 February 2021. Now, the question is, when did we purchase the subsidiary or when did we acquire the shares in the subsidiary? Because that will determine how many months we are dealing with from the time we bought the subsidiary to the end of the financial period. Remember, when we are doing the statement of profit or loss, especially for media acquisitions, we have to only consider the amount from the date of the acquisition to the end of the financial period. Unless we've had it for the full year, then obviously it's going to be easy. We're just going to be doing the additions of the two, obviously taking into account relevant information. But if we acquired it midway sometime, then we have to take the number of months into consideration. Now, here's what I must say as we go along here. If you have not done a consolidation question before, if you do not know how to even do a simple consolidated statement of profit or loss or consolidated statement of financial position, this one is a bit advanced. It's not difficult, but it's a bit more advanced. So I would encourage you to check out the simple ones before you get to this one, which will greatly simplify your work by giving you a foundation of exactly how you ought to be dealing with it. We've done some lessons on the consolidated statement of profit or loss and the consolidated statement of financial position. You'll find them in the links in the description below. But if you already know how to do a simple consolidation question, then we can go right ahead with this one. So let's go back to our question and look at the dates. We're told here that on 1st of June 2020, 
Okay, so the question is, so let me just change the color and underline that date. The question is, if our year end is 28 February 2021, when did our financial year start? Well, it started 12 months back. And when would that be? That would be 1st of March 2020. So if our financial period started on the 1st of March 2020, that means that we acquired the subsidiary after the beginning of the financial period. So we have a media acquisition here. As you can see, it was on the 1st of June 2020 that Villa Cargo acquired the shares in Shiligo. So that means we'll be dealing with the period from 1st of June to the 28th of February 2021. So let's calculate how many months those are. Well, June, because it's the 1st of June, we have to add June as well. So it's June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January and February. So those are nine months that we'll be dealing with. That's very important and you'll see why just now. So let's go back here and let's start by doing a calculation. The first one we're going to do is revenue. So how are we going to do the revenue? I'm just going to write here workings and then at the bottom I'm going to write number one and the first one we're going to do the calculations for is revenue. Okay, so now let's do the calculation for revenue. We know that Villa Cargo is the parent, so let's write Villa cargo and write the revenue for villa cargo which is the 920,000 rand okay once we've done that we go down here and write shiligo so here what i'm doing is i'm doing the calculation or the workings for the revenue of the consolidation so let's do that so for shiligo remember we've only had this subsidiary we've only acquired this subsidiary from the first of june so we've only had it for nine months to the end of the financial period so what we're going to do is that in the statement of profit or loss, you have to take the amount multiplied by 9 divided by 12 because we didn't acquire it at the beginning of the financial period or some time before then. So that means we only take the income and expenses of the subsidiary from the date that we acquired it. So we're going to take the 530,000 rand, which is the revenue for the subsidiary, and then we multiply that by 9 months divided by 12, and that gives us 397,500 rand. Once we've done that, let's go back to the question and see what relevant information we need to take into account. We've just read the information that we were given here on top, but all the information that we have read so far here on top does not affect our revenue. So let's go to additional information and see what they say. At the date of acquisition, the fair values of Shiligo's assets were equal to their carrying amounts with the exception of a leased property which had a fair value of 29 million rand above its carrying amount and a remaining lease term of 10 years at that date. All depreciation is included in cost of sales. So we can see here obviously this will affect our cost of sales, it will affect our fair value adjustment as well as our property plan and equipment but not revenue. So let's go to the second one. Villa Cargo transferred raw materials at their cost of 30.5 million rand to Shiligo in September 2020. Shiligo processed all these materials, incurring additional direct costs of 6.4 million rand and sold them back to Villa Cargo in November 2020 for 45 million rand. At 28 February 2021, Villa Cargo had 11 million rand of this good still in inventory. There were no other intra-group sales. So what do we see here? We have what is called intra-group trading. And remember, we have to eliminate whatever sales is happening within the companies in the group, as well as any unrealized profit. So we've done a lesson specifically on that as well, where we looked at a simple intra-group trading example, and we calculated it and completed the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. That's why I said you could have checked that one out first. But with this one here, we'll still be able to know what to do. The first thing that you see here is that we have sales between the subsidiary and the parent company. Now, whenever you have sales between the companies in the group, you have to eliminate it. You have to take it out completely. So the first sale I see here is the 30 million 500,000 rand. So we're told Villa Cargo transferred raw materials at their cost of 30.5 million rand to Shiligo. Okay, so that's the first sales item that we see. So we have to take it out completely, meaning we are deducting it from our revenue because Villa Cargo recorded the revenue when it sold the goods to Shiligo, which is its subsidiary. And then the next one we have here is that Shiligo processed all these materials incurring additional direct costs of 6.4 million rand and sold them back to Villa Cargo in November 2020 for 45 million rand. Again, Again, here we are seeing the subsidiary selling those goods back after processing it further. So we have 
30 million rand here the parent company is selling to the subsidiary and 45 million rand where the subsidiary is selling them back to the parent company so we have to eliminate the full amount so it's going to be the 45 million rand plus the 30.5 million rand and that is going to be the intra-group sales that we need to eliminate so let's write here intra-group sales and by the way we are omitting the last three zeros so if they're in millions obviously you see them as if they're in thousands for presentation's sake so let's write here intra-group sales all right so what are the intra-group sales well the first one is where the parent company as you can see here sold or transferred the raw materials at their cost to shiligo that means the parent company recorded a revenue of 30.5 million so i'm gonna write here 30 500 plus the 45 million rand where the subsidiary sold back the goods to the parent company so plus 45 million and you get an amount of 75.5 and in fact we must put that negative because we are removing it because it's an intra-group sales all right it's a sale that happened within the group and once we've done that we have taken everything into account in relation to our revenue so let's just add everything together so you can see we take the full revenue for the parent company and we take the proportional revenue of the subsidiary from the time we acquired it to the end of the financial period remember taking into account the months and then we remove any revenue or any sales that was made within the group and once we've done that we get our total sales so that gives us an amount of 1 billion 242 million rand obviously we've omitted the three zeros as i mentioned so that's going to be the revenue amount that we're going to put down so let me write down here what the consolidated amount is going to be for revenue all right now we can move on to cost of sales remember if you have intra-group sales you still have to take it into account in the cost of sales we're going to deduct the exact same amount that we have here 75,500 why are we doing that in cost of sales well because the one who is selling is recording it as a revenue that's why we deducted it but the one who is buying is also recording it as a cost of sale or as inventory okay if it has not sold it yet that's why we are removing the entire 75 500 from the cost of sales as well and then we see if we have any inventory still within the group that was bought from another company within the group then we have to take it into account as well in calculating what is called unrealized profit okay so let's do the workings for cost of sales so i'm just gonna copy this and put it down here and write cost of sales right once i've done that i can take the cost of sales of the parent company and just copy it from the statement of profit or loss and then take the one for the subsidiary as well and obviously multiply it by nine divided by 12 because we acquired it nine months before the end of the financial period and there we go it's given us our amount and then we deduct the intra-group sales which is the exact same one that we had at the top here but with regard to the cost of sales we are not done as yet remember we have to take into account any unrealized profit so the question is do we have unrealized profit well, if you checked out our other lessons, you should know that if we still have any inventory in the group that was sold from one company to another one within the group, then we will have unrealized profit. The only time we don't have unrealized profit is if we sold all the inventory to companies outside the group. So let's go back to our question. As you can see here, we're told that at 28 February 2021, Villa Cargo had 11 million rand of these goods still in inventory. We hope that you are gaining value from this lesson thus far. To continue, we charge a reasonable fee whereby the full link to the entire lesson will be provided. Our rate for the entire lesson are as follows. If you are within South Africa, we charge a rate of 100 Rand. And if you are outside South Africa, we charge a rate of only $10. If you wish to purchase the entire lesson together with the documents with the questions and answers that we used in this lesson you can contact us on our email as you can see here below info at counters.com or you can also check further contact details at our facebook page at facebook.com slash counters and you'll find this information in the description below as well see you on the entire video cheers